sponsored by Company of Crime. Let's talk about Company of Crime. So, as mentioned, this is a, a uh, turn-based tactical combat game. X XCOM style game, basically. Um, set in the 1960s in London. And what's neat about this is you can play either as the criminals or the police. Now, we're gonna be playing as the criminals today, but you can play as the police, and I think the, the feel of the game would be substantially different. So I'm quite curious about taking a look at that, but I, I got we gotta do the, the criminal thing. I think it just sounds like a heck of a lot more fun. Um, we do, 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 Swinging London. Oh yeah, so one of the big things with this is it's heavily, especially at the start, heavily melee combat oriented. And that's what's really nice. I think it's a really, really tight interpretation of this sort of turn-based tactical style but with an emphasis on melee. And it feels like really, 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 really good. Really, really, really good. Da, 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 da. Kuman says made a beef stew with carrots and mushrooms oh, based on pasta. That sounds really good. Yeah, I don't know why the internet was uh, blacked out um, on Thursday, actually. Um, there may have been an update about why that was, but I'm not sure. Play as Austin Powers. That's not my bag, baby. So this is a sponsored stream. Uh, it is sponsored by uh, 1C Entertainment over here. I don't know the the um, the companies. I meant to look up uh, what games they had made previously because this one is so tight. It feels like they're definitely an experienced studio. So we're going to see how it is. Knocking people over the head with submachine gun and Tommy guns. I mean, there's just not that many guns going around at first, I suppose. Company of crime. All right, so yeah, criminals and police. The so criminals, the Clearwater Twins. London, J June 1st, 1964. The home of rock music, miniskirts, and fashionable cars. London is the epitome of all things cool, baby. The youth play a sp oh, damn youth. The youth play a special role with their pirate radios and fashion statements. Mods, rockers, lemonheads. What are lemonheads? And rude boys all dream of a carefree life, but fortunes are not split evenly, and many are left with nothing but scraps. Ali and Nate grew up in the poverty-stricken East End after the Second World War. They haven't had it easy, having had their fair share of scuffles and other troubled youth with other troubled youth as well as the law. Now they're ready to make sure they'll have the respect and fortune they feel they deserve. They are on a road to become the infamous Clearwater Twins. So yeah, our main mechanics will be fear and respect. Our, our main, our main, yes, our main mechanic will be fear, fear and respect. Our two main mechanics will be fear and respect and a gang full of people who leveled up. Our three, three primary, I think I'm gonna leave the tutorial on. I've gone through it already, but actually I think the tutorial does a really good job of presenting some of the mechanics in an organic way that I think will, I will flow better for us. I'm gonna do that. I like the names of the difficulty. Easy peasy, bog standard, bloody hell. We're gonna go bog standard for this baby. Boom. I look like, like sort of Andy Warhol-esque sort of pop art kind of vibe. <clears throat> All right, so here we have Nate and Allie. These are the two twins, two Clearwater twins, I think, right? Um, what time is it, Nate? All right, I should do a different voice for her. Actually, again, if I knew how to do a Cockney accent, uh, quarter to midnight, what, what? <laughs> he should close the shop anytime now. Remember the plan. When he steps out, we jump on him and knock him out. Then we steal as many jewels as we can and get out through the back alley. Again, this is the tutorial, just linear little setup. There's a whole management mode. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, anyway, are you ready, Ali? Ready as I'll ever be. Quick job in and out, and we'll be gone before it comes to. You lock the place and go home already. I'll stay a while and check the books. <laughs> Optional objective, don't kill anyone. Bring down a little bit too much heat, maybe. Remember to drop your T's and H's and swap TH for F is a good place to start. Yeah. Um, the coast is clear. Let's do fists. Is that how it's supposed to go? Drop the TH for an F? Let's do fists? Okay, excellent. I'm so bad at accents. Okay. So, each character, yes, has two action points. So you can see down here, these are two characters. My head's not blocking anything important. Eh, a little bit of the toolbar. Let me just scrooch myself over here. So we got our characters, we've got health, we've also got stamina. Um, and the stamina early on is gonna be the, one of the more important things because stamina is how we knock people out. Uh, and yes, two action points. Now, it's gonna tell me to move over here. So I'm gonna do that with Nate first. And that, that will count as an action. So it's going to eat one of my two action points. Now, at a certain point very soon in the tutorial, it's gonna point out the fact that you can actually combine an attack with a move 
for just a total of one action point. So you basically get free moves, which is kind of nice. Anyway, now it's uh, re recommending that I go and punch. Now this, uh, we are behind this guy here. Uh, this little arrow on the ground, which will become more obvious um, after we're out of this particular tutorial mode, shows that we're in a position where uh, we will get flanking bonus here. So we get a big bonus to hit. We can actually see the stats or base accuracy 65%, 20% bonus from flanking. To me, this is like, you have to like mod the hell out of XCOM to get the information presented like this. I really appreciate the fact that this is just part of the basic UI. You guys know me and how I feel about user interfaces and stuff like that, how it's super important. Well, this is a good example. So we're gonna go ahead, punch this employee in the back of the head. Very rude. Boom. Um, there you go. And here's what it's telling me here is most close combat actions can be combined with movement. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna choose the hit action over here with Ali. And it's going to tell me to move here. And what's going to happen, it's going to move and attack at a cost of a single action point. So considerably more efficient. And she's definitely got like sort of a mod outfit. Oh, I wish I could zoom in more to uh, to showcase. That's what we need to mod. We need to mod in like more zooming so we can check out the awesome outfits. So she can use her second action point to just punch this guy again. Oh, he's, he's not quite dead. Well, actually, we don't want to kill him. It's very important. We just want to knock him out. Mm hmm Yeah, XCOM should have an interface more like Aurora. Oh my. Oh my. Uh, fighting in groups against single en enemy gives you tactical advantage. Tying up an opponent renders them immobile and vulnerable to further attacks. So yes, we can in fact try to tie up people. It will make them miss their turn and they'll get extra damage. Which is good because obviously whoever's doing the tying up is also missing their turn. Now, it's not tying up literally with a rope. It's just, you know, holding them down over here. But here's the good one. Some skills cause so much pain that characters become disoriented. While disoriented, characters are uh, capable of, to only basic to only basic actions. Use the nut kick skill on an enemy. Nut kick, in quotes. A move that will quickly even out the playing field. Kick an enemy in the nuts, dealing damage and disorienting it. Can't be performed from the side. Of course, because you got to hit dead on to the front or further the back, I guess. Being disoriented removes the unit's zone of control and access to the most of their skills. <laughs> the nutcracker. Yeah, we're just going to do a little bit of a ballet on this person here. Bwah! Oh, critical! Critical hit to the nuts. Phew, I didn't expect him to put up that much of a fight. Let's grab the goods and get out of here. All right, so yes, we can uh, WASD to move around, which is really nice. We can use Q and E to rotate the screen as well. Beautiful, lovely, and yeah, these green indicators are loot. You'll also see the, uh, it'll show up in the objectives list, which is really nice. Like, you don't really have to worry about um, missing things. It's pretty clearly uh, labeled, which I thought was great. So if we move just adjacent to some area with loot, we'll automatically pick up said loot. Mm -hmm. This will give us our seed money to start our gang. These two twins. We don't have to get any kids anymore, yeah. All right, now he's gonna come in here. Steal the rest of the jewels. Excellent. I've called the police! They'll be here any time now. Oh, shite! The owner was still here. Whiskey and chocolate. Hey, Rex Squatch. You paid off your smallest student loan. Hey, congratulations. That's a big deal. Talk about organized crime and extortion. Many years to go before they'll all be paid off. Yeah. Yeah, it took a long time for me as well. And, you know, I mean, I'm not... I'm not that old, but I'm pretty sure the university was cheaper for me than it is now. And it wasn't as bad in Canada as if, if you're in the States, either. Uh, and we don't have it as lucky as the Europeans, though. Some places you just get paid to go to uni. Ha! Huh. Oh, shit! Oh, shite! The owner was still here. We'll have to deal with him as well. We have enough jewelry. Let's go. Boss character. Now, I don't know if it's going to really showcase it here. I think that'll be in a future fight. Oh, he's hitting me with a hammer! Um, uh, there's a lot of contextual actions, as we'll find out. Interactions with tables, countertops, um, items that are just lying around. It's really good. All right. Tiles in front of and on the side of a character are considered a zone of control. Characters may enter a zone of control, but are then locked in combat. Moving within or away from a zone of control results in a free melee attack for the opponent. So, yeah, basically... If you're in, if you're moving out of a square that's in someone's zone of control, they get a free attack. And if this attack is successful, 
um, it'll interrupt your movement. So then you'll have to restart the movement a second time. So the example here for the tutorial is, okay, let's try to disengage. So we've got Ali selected. We're gonna move over here. We get a nice little preview to let us know, hey, dummy, you're walking through a zone of control. So we're gonna go here. He's gonna take a swing at Ali with the hammer. Oh my God, that's so brutal. Back of the head with a hammer. So it stopped Ali right over there. Still eight our action point though. Melee weapons are much more dangerous than bare fists. If you find yourself in a sticky situation, it's wise to try to get rid of the opponent's weapon. Select the disarm skill. Sounds great. Someone brought a gun to a knife fight. That's not fair. Wrestle the weapon away and we'll disarm the enemy. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And we took the weapon away from him. Excellent, it's on the ground, I think. Ah, here we go, no, it is right here. The environment can be used to your advantage. Some skills can only be used, for example, next to a wall or table. Select the headbang skill. And use it on the enemy. I do love it. Bang an enemy's head in a hard object to cause damage and make them disoriented. Being disoriented removes zone of control and access to most of their skills. Poof! Sit the fuck down. Yeah, though, I meant to say, there there are a few uh, bad words in this game. So you may not have heard it in the audio there, there was an F-bomb drop. There might be a few in text as well. All right, if the police are, is about to arrive on scene, it's wise to get out as quickly as possible. If you have time to spare, make sure you collect all the evidence that could implicate you. We're gonna do that. So we've got evidence going on here. So it's optional. We don't have to pick up the, the items that we dropped accidentally, but we should do that. So we're just checking around, seeing if we left anything behind. What's that? What's that? Pick up a letter. Apparently we had a letter in our pocket that we dropped. Um, let me move here. Going. Oh, because we're escaping out the back. Yeah. So, oh, because the, the Rosers. That is, is, that a, is that a word for the police? They've shown up at the front here. Um, so we're going to make our exit through the back. Street cop. Tried to arrest me. Luckily missed. That's good. So in order to evade getting hit in a zone of control, you can take a defensive stance by using an action point to brace for it. Brace Fort is great skill for escaping enemies or getting into flanking positions. Select Brace Fort and make a run. So Brace Fort gives you back some of our stamina and gives us some stamina armor, so we'll take a little bit less stamina damage from attacks, but it also ignores zone, enemy zone of control until the start of your next turn. It does cost an action, but we would have probably lost an action trying to move away from this guy anyway. So we'll do that and then move as far as we can. No attack opportunity. Crikey, it's the Rosers. Yeah, I don't know why we're Ozers. I don't know what the uh, the origin of that is. All right, so we're gonna move Nate out here. This is one of our escape areas, and we can leave the scene. I think it'll automatically leave the scene when all of our characters are in here um, at the end of a turn, but we can also force someone to leave. So Nate's gonna escape the area, removing him from the mission. Oh, he's throwing something at me. Picked up a random bottle or something that was sitting around. We'll be able to do that. Luckily, he missed. So we're going to go ahead and just escape here as well. Not the cleanest of getaways, perhaps, but it's going to be okay. And you get some little stats. Outstanding success. Great. Just head to the local pint. I head to the local, have a pint, wait for it all to blow over. Maybe I should have had a uh, special beverage for this. Our Tom Foolery and the jewelers went without a hitch. <laughs> They kept rabbiting on how I shouldn't get too giddy about it. Oh, I sure, they can do a Cockney accent. Like this once or twice a year. We'd be living like their royal fucking majesties of East End. Then again, we still had to get shot of the sparkles. The best we could hope for was fencing them for tuppence on the shilling. So, they gave a bell to a few old mates of his. He smiled and said, why settle for East End when we can have the whole of London? The whole of London. They trusted his pals with the gems, and they promised to knock on some doors for us in return. The local establishments ought to purchase their peace of mind from our newly founded Ali and Nate's Insurance and Protection Limited. <laughs> Getting a one-time pop was the start, but if we want to do this proper, we need the velvet rolling in regular. All right, uh, uh, oh, Enabix. Oh yes, I did catch the F1 qualifiers this morning. It was fantastic. I don't want to say anything more, in case there's spoilers for people who just still have it recorded but it's worth watching. Okay, we're at the next step in the tutorial. Hire crew. Rob on a place is a way to... 
<laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have to make so many apologies if I try to do the accent, but let, let's try to do this one. Robbing a place is a way to make easy money quick, but it's not a very sustainable source of income. Building an empire <laughs> requires influence. Influence needs manpower and manpower needs cash flow. Hire four crew members with the jewels we stole. Ah. <sighs> This area shows current objectives. Fulfilling these will bring your criminal career and the plot of the game forward. It seems our current objective is to hire our first gang members. Let's go to the crew view through the button at the bottom of the screen. Solid tutorial. Um, in this screen, you can see all relevant info about your crew members. You can level them up when they've acquired enough experience and hire new ones. This area shows the class of the unit. And man, our employees are going to have so much class. There are four classes and each are color coded throughout the game. Let's see. Who else is here? Currently, your criminal standing allows you to have only four crew members. As your career progresses, you will increase this limit via several methods. For example, coercing ownership of pubs. That's going to be a priority. Let's fulfill our objective and hire four crew members. Uh, each crew, each recruit costs money to hire. Worse yet, you'll need to pay them each month as a salary. So we'll hit high, higher over here. So we've hired Cranky, um, who was... Uh, what class was Cranky? Cranky is a bouncer. He's got the barbell symbol. Okay. So we'll try to make maybe one of each class. So we've got a couple. These are torturers. we got Doc and Bane. I kind of like the idea of Doc. Yeah, I think that's really good. So Doc, this is nickname, Gary McCarthy, but Doc. Do they have different stats, do you? <laughs> no, these these have the same stats. Okay. We'll get, we'll get Doc. Um, we, there's only one brain available, so I guess we're hiring the cook, Helen Jones. Jolly good. And then for the, what is it, the smuggler role. Smuggler is able in both melee brawls and gunfights. Smuggler's speciality lies in his ability to get out of places or places while packing extra punch. So we got the Undertaker, Catherine Chapman, and the Hammer, Sandra Adams. Kind of like the Undertaker. Obeying for the Batman jokes would have been pretty funny. But yeah, I like I like The Undertaker. I'm on it. Alright, so we're now at 404, completing our mission. I like how the loading screen is just like a cup of tea. Have a cuppa. Alright, we've got we've got our crew. Brings back to the 90s and WWF. Mm-hmm. Someone's gotta do the um the steel cage copy pasta. Hell in a Cell, there you go! We can have Hell in a Cell memes, exactly! Alright, things are unlocking. More things are unlocking. Chatbot is deleting the name of the chimney sweep from Mary Poppins? I don't see a message about that. Oh, because it's Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> um, Moobot? I don't, actually, that might not be a Moobot, that might be a Twitch thing. Because if Moobot blocks things, I see it in the chat and I can choose to undo it, but it's literally not popping up at all. It must be like hardcore locked. Anyway, secure income. Now, now that we have a crew, we need to work smarter, not harder. <laughs> the local business owners are right for the picking, but we need, I don't know, I always have to put my hands up like this too. When I, now that we have a crew, <laughs> uh, local business owners are right for the picking, but we need to work more low key. Persuade the local business owners, yeah, persuade them to pay us a monthly um, protection fee. Secure at least 100 pounds from our extortion for this month. These are our two resources, money and influence. Money buys and pays you, uh, buys and pays you stuff. Influence, on the other hand, is used in several places. Getting narcotics or weapons costs you influence, but so does building a legal cover for your criminal operations or getting police off your back. All right, so we've got a few places. So we're in Newham, Newham. I'm sure it's not pronounced Newham, but now I kind of want to pronounce it that way just because I know it's going to pee people off. Newham. Um, and then we've got a few sites where we can do and do some extortion, uh, including the Burton Bush Diner, uh, which uh, has lovely little pot pies. So restaurants are your source for respect and tactics. Owning and upgrading restaurants will allow you to increase the number of units you can bring to a job. Family-owned restaurant that serves traditional home-cooked food. You'll find the best shepherd's pie in Yorkshire puddings here. Mmm. New ham? Is there an old beef somewhere? <laughs> that food does not look good. I mean, this looks like it was taken 
out of a 1960s, like, you know, magazine or, or, or cheap menu. I mean, at least it's in color, which is pretty impressive, but yeah. Um, the mushy peas in particular look very poor. Anyway. Uh, oh, I just realized, okay, that was the restaurant. I'm, I can't actually do a mission there right now. Uh, this is a district view. From here, you can access any of the locations in the district and have your gang uh, members perform assignments on them. Ownership of the locations is a key element. Civilian-owned locations are great, and you can, for example, extort them for protection money. Mwahaha. Yellow locations are own locations, and cyan colored locations are special locations that cannot be owned at all. Any other color indicates a rival criminal gang. The green icon shows the location as part of your current objective. For each district in the game, there are fear and respect values. They dictate how much the civilian population fears you and respects you. You need to raise both as high as possible in order for your career to succeed. Both of them will allow you to perform more powerful assignments if you reach a certain threshold. Um, I was going to say, high fear will unlock menace assignments. This will allow you to drive your rival businesses, ri drive out your rival businesses, and make them civilian-owned locations. High respect will unlock coerce ownership, allowing you to make civilian-owned businesses an offer they can't refuse and make the place your own. The other thing that happens with high fear is I think when you go to extort, instead of having to fight, they just like GG out. Um, so we've got a pub, the Death Vagmon. It's a good name. I like how they've got the description for like what a pub does, but then they have specific description for this pub. The Death Vagmon is a pub Ali has never really liked. The name fits the place. She likes being seen and the Vagmon is filled with quiet corners and private booths. There's also, oh, right. What effect would it have if we own it? The resources it would happen if we were to own it. Um, that's different from the income from escorting it itself. We'll be right back. We got Wash Central. Laundry. Helps you dispose of evidence and get rid of heat from your gang members. Okay, that's pretty cool. What's the other location I can uh, harass right now? The Duke of York Barbershop. Ah. Owning and upgrading barbershops will allow you to remove heat from your units and unlock new melee weapons. Give people a new fancy haircut. You can't even recognize them. It's amazing. I kind of feel like we should start with the pub. I mean, that's where all good stories start, right? Yeah, see, uh, Belcock says, has to be the pub, right? Exactly. I agree. So we're going to click extortion. So this is the assignment view. You can read what the assignment does and what kind of rewards it will have if successful. Uh, you will need to select which of your gang members will start preparing for this assignment. Study the place and find the ins and outs. Assignments usually take several days to complete, and often, but not always, they lead to tactical missions. You can assign a maximum of two gang members to prepare the assignment. Particularly with the extortion assignments, if you have high respect among the population, they might succeed automatically. Yeah, because, I mean, the idea is we're going to protect you, right? And that one, especially once other gangs get in there, it's going to be our job to protect these places from other gangs who want to get involved. I'm going to go and um, I'm going to send Helen Jones, the cook, one of our brains. Uh, game time doesn't go forward before you press this button. Click click the button to continue. Now time is going to advance. So it's going to take a week of checking out the place. I like how like the, sit, the ashtray moves, empties, gets refilled. The place must smell, just reek of stale cigarette smoke. Mm -hmm. Pub, you're British, you need a pub. Yeah, I think so. Looks like the looks like the owner of the place is a tough nut to crack. The owner refused to pay protection money for us, so we have to send our crew to beat some consent. Beat some consent to the owner and their employees. All right. I love the art for the everyone here. She looks very cool. Undertaker here. This is the crew selection screen. Here you can choose which gang members you want to take the mission, and you can choose which equipment they should carry. You haven't unlocked any equipment, so once you're happy with chosen units, go to the planning screen to continue. So we've got a limit of bringing three. That's our crew size limit over here. Um, Helen Jones, the cook, is locked because she's who I sent on the assignment in the first place, and then we can choose who else we're going to bring. I feel like we should bring Cranky. Cranky the bouncer, right? Um, so who do we bring in addition to Cranky? Do we bring Doc or Undertaker? Bring all three. No, we maximum of four, three we can bring. We have four people. Cook is locked in. I want to bring Cranky. Do we bring Doc or Undertaker? Most people want the Undertaker. Although there's a good point, Doc is a torturer, but I don't, we don't have to torture anyone. We just have to slap him around a little bit. It's going to be fine. So bring the Undertaker. 
I love this too. This makes me think of the old, um, what am I thinking? Like, like the Rainbow Six kind of single player games where you like planning out the, the sort of attacks that you would do on things, you know, that whole sort of phase. Here you can choose where your units will enter the level by drag and dropping the different entrances. From the map on the right, you can see where the entry points are. The red area is a restricted area where your units will automatically start a fight if they enter that area. So, looks like the owner plays Tough Nuts Crack. Yeah, so we can start, right, walk right in through the front door, or we can come in through the back alley. How do you guys want to do that? Do we just sw swagger in the front door? I mean, you know, we were trying to build a rep here. Or is it better to just, you know, surprise them? They don't even know. They, they'll never know when we're around and we might come at them. Split the party. And that's the other thing, you know? We could split the party. I don't think that's a good idea. Not backstab. I think I think the front's good. I think I think it's better for, like, building an image, you know? We, we're not afraid of anything. We're just going to walk right in through the front door. We're legitimate business people offering insurance and protection. Look at this art. And, and the teacup. What I like actually about the teacup is because of like the posterization and different things like that, um, is it reminds me of like old animated like GeoCities web pages, which is just a wonderful aesthetic. Uh, they need to try to black, they can't flunk flank. They need street cred. Where's the top rope option for the Undertaker, right? All right, so yeah, here's, here's the place, the Death Vagabond. I like how like, I mean, there's cool signs. It actually looks great. I love the wear. Public house, fine ales and fresh pies. 100%. If I was walking down a street somewhere in the Ook and I saw this place, I would go inside. It would just be a requirement. Absolutely. So we can choose whichever one of our characters to move first. You can see they have a slightly different health. Cranky here, a little stronger, a little tougher. I mean, again, he is the bouncer, which is good. They do have some different abilities, right? Straight up hit, that's good. Hunker down, gives you range defense. Someone starts shooting at us. Brace for it, we looked at that already. Now, the cook here can try to insult people to make them enraged, which I don't know exactly what it means. I know what happens when my characters get enraged. I don't control them directly. They just like run in and start punching people. They might not care about zone of control the same way. It's possible they can't use all their abilities. I'm not sure, so it's potent. We also got a calm down over here that we can use on our own units. Removes panic or enraged. Also provide that unit immunity to status effects for the duration of the mission, which sounds pretty cool. Maybe I should start with one of these right away to get the immunity to it. We've got the tie up. We've got a push kick, which is an awesome, awesome move. We'll take a look at Cranky over here. So um, he's got heave to the side, throw enemy sideways and deal damage. Just pick them up, chuck them. We've also got wrestle, which is looks to me like a slightly better tie up. And then with the Undertaker, we have low profile enter concealment mode. I don't do stealth missions. So we're gonna just walk in. I think our brain, let's let's have the brain walk in first. The cook over here. Um, so I'm gonna have to just walk up to her one action point limit first. When I get around to it, geez. Some civilians in here. So let's walk in. No big deal. We're not in a restricted area. The restricted areas are over here. So it's not gonna insta start a fight. So we can position a little bit. We do have an employee over here. The thing is, our, what we have to do is knock out the target. 